Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Without it, you'd be devoid of all energy and nutrients, doomed to a terrible day of stopping food companies around the world from profiting off decades of corporate conditioning telling you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Strap in, grab a time-appropriate snack, and let's find out the disturbing truth about breakfast. For as long as there have been humans, humans have needed to eat. From scavenged fruit and nuts to hunt and cook meat, the concept of food as fuel is not so much a theory as it is a necessity. When we expend a lot of energy, we need to offset that by taking in a similar amount. So, food is fuel. But just how much fuel do we need at the beginning of each day? Prior to the early 1900s, the common answer would have been not much at all. Unless you worked in an occupation that had you up and out of the house in the early hours of the day or were being cared for on a regimen that required multiple meals a day at set times, breakfast wasn't all that common. For those who did partake in the practice, there were no bells and whistles attached, and they just ate what they had on hand. After all, in the 1800s, farmers weren't doling out berry top stacks of waffles and pitchers of orange juice at the crack of dawn. They ate simple, easy to prepare meals that often consisted of the previous night's leftovers. So how did we as a society pivot away from the simple farmer's breakfast to the sugar and carb fest of today. It was the efforts of countless businessmen, doctors, and religious fanatics that would shape the idea of breakfast as we know it. Before any organized ploys could crop up, the natural evolution of human occupations would reap its own changes on our breakfast habits. Back in the early 16th century, during England's Tudor period, poorer citizens began working for those richer than them, as opposed to managing their own land. As the concept of employment spread and more individuals began working for others, employees were no longer the masters of their own time. They were now required to work long days, often without breaks, and only had time to eat after a hard day's work. Naturally, people began filling up before work as well to fuel them through the day. Then, the dawn of the industrial age saw people moving from farms to factories in swarms. With more people employed than ever, working set times from morning to evening, more and more people partook in the practice of breakfast. Though even then, their meals were a far cry from today's breakfast spreads. By the late 1800s, the Industrial Revolution was well in effect, which meant that the vast majority of employed individuals spent their days confined to a small area, instead of laboring away on a farm, which actually required the energy provided by a heaping plate of eggs and sausages. People were now spending their time sitting down in an office or standing in a fixed position on a factory assembly line. A large breakfast became linked to the indigestion faced by the suddenly sedentary population, and so preferences skewed lighter. Of course, this meant that there was now a market for a healthy alternative. Enter Dr. John Harvey Kellogg founder of Kellogg's Cereal Company, stringent follower of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and founding member of the Battle Creek Sanitarium. In a coming together of religious ideals against masturbation and the medical and scientific knowledge needed to do so, Kellogg developed the first breakfast cereal. Cornflakes became an unexpected hit with the patients of the sanatorium, who served it in the morning to suppress their perceived sexual desires. Eventually, the founders decided to take the product to the mass market, and after adding a little bit of sugar to make it more palatable, cornflakes as we know them were born. The product was healthy, tasty, and most of all convenient. And as consumers began buying up Kellogg's, more companies began to develop their own cereals. The convenience of serving up a bowl of cereal propelled the product to breakfast staple status, beginning a long line of food items that would go on to inhabit the same space. By the early 1900s, light, convenient breakfasts were all the rage. For Edward Bernays, who had recently taken up work with Beechnut, this was an issue. Beechnut was a packaging company that had recently, at the time, diversified their production into the food business. In particular, the company specialized in bacon. While bacon is hailed today as a symbol of the American breakfast, the early 20th century 
was quite indifferent to it. Bernays, however, was determined to change that. Edward Bernays is held up as the father of public relations and a pioneer in the field for his ability to spin the narrative in his favor. In a time where health meant light breakfast, Bernays simply redefined health with the help of 5,000 physicians. He consulted with a doctor that reported that heavy breakfast made up for the energy expended during sleep much better than a light breakfast did, following which he beckoned the doctor to invite recommendations from thousands of other physicians, all of whom concurred with the report, as well as the statement that endorsed bacon and eggs for the meal. As newspapers across the country boasted headlines commending bacon and egg breakfasts, beech nut sales skyrocketed. The success of Kellogg's cereal and Bernays bacon had one thing in common. People wanted convenience when it came to breakfast foods. While lunch and dinner had the luxury of plentiful time for lengthy preparation, breakfast was the first meal of the day. Unless you were waking up before work to slave over the stove, breakfast had to be quick. One such example of this was pancakes. In some form, humans have been eating pancakes for centuries. At its core, a pancake is just a flattened disk of starchy grains and almost the entire world has access to some sort of grain. Taking the prevalence of pancakes and pancake-like foods back to prehistoric days. As the preparation method evolved over time, pancakes became increasingly simple to make, and therefore a quick convenient breakfast alternative to labor-intensive bread that could be enjoyed later in the day. In a similar vein, foods like oatmeal and porridge rose to prominence in the breakfast scene for their simple preparation requirements. Nutritious, easy to make, and good for children. Oatmeal was breakfast that mothers didn't feel guilty feeding to their children and had the added benefit of saving them time. It was in this time period that coffee became the drink most associated with breakfast time. People valued their sleep to give them energy, which was a main reason that convenience was paramount in breakfast foods. But any working adult can attest to the fact that waking up early still strains at our energy levels regardless of how much sleep we had, which is why the energy boost provided by caffeine became such an important part of breakfast. Coffee woke up people in the mornings, making them more alert and more productive and therefore allow them to perform better at work. The convenience of brewing a cup of liquid energy in the morning is something that countless people rely on to this day. Even more so as the technology involved allowed for easier and quicker preparations. Coffee was not the only breakfast item that benefited from technological advancements. In fact, technology would allow for many more consumables to elevate themselves from simple foods to breakfast staples. One such example is orange juice. Practically inseparable from the idea of a complete breakfast today, orange juice was once too perishable to be readily available across the majority of the world. However, in the early 1900s, juice pasteurization was invented, allowing for canned orange juice to be shipped wherever the market demanded it. One drawback of industrial pasteurization practices is that it strips orange juice of the orange fruit's inherent nutritious qualities, taking away vitamins and freshness, which is then supplanted through artificial official means. However, marketing once again lent a hand to popularizing the item. Similar to bacon and cereal, the association between the product and breakfast was crafted by corporations. In the early 20th century, the world suffered a global pandemic of the influenza virus. The importance of consuming vitamins rose amongst the population, who were promptly presented with orange juice, a beacon of vitamins on the breakfast table. The popularization of breakfast items, from bacon and eggs to orange and coffee, can be owed to a combination of convenience and commercialization. Through marketing the right items at just the right angles, corporations have been able to convince generations of people that breakfast, despite being like any other meal, is in fact the most important meal of the day.